Good afternoon to everyone. Um, I normally do this in, in Spanish, so part of my English, if it isn't fluent, I'm going to try to do my best. Um, I just want to thank everybody to be here, especially uh, SoccerX and the delegates and presidents from Ecuador, from all the clubs. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Miguel Angel Or. I'm the president of Liga Pro, the Ecuadorian professional football soccer league. Two years ago, um, on this day, the world, my country, my city, the city I live, suffered one of the biggest crises in the history, the COVID-19 and the pandemic. Um, we lost thousands of lives, and I just want to pay tribute to them today. Uh, all the families, all the people that lost families, and my condolences to them. In 2018, in the middle of a TV rights crisis, the clubs of Ecuador united and decided to form the Professional Soccer League. It wasn't easy. What they, what they did was to just leave the Federation and start a whole new organization. With that, you have to learn a lot. And we, we decided to travel to Spain to learn from the best, La Liga. There, Javier Tebas and Oscar Mayo, the people that I deeply admire, they guide us throughout the whole process and, and help us to form what we have today. But not only they help us with ideas, they help us with a really good structure and bringing the La Liga inside Liga Pro in Ecuador. I don't know if it's had happened in, in other leagues. I think it's this type of agreement, a management agreement is probably one of a kind. We have one of the top executives in Europe in our league, Alberto Diaz, which is our executive director. And from four years from now, we just, we have created a professional soccer league that is one of the top in our continent. How we did that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you uh, what Liga Pro, a new Liga rises. This was our management agreement that I was just talking about. And the way we have worked this together is just with a bunch of ideas, a bunch of new, new things that were coming, like economic control, which was something completely different and new for our clubs. And we have been fighting for almost four years from then to learn that. Um, this is the agenda that I'm going to present you today, which is where were, where were we four years ago? Our origin, our achievement, all the professional soccer leagues and the conclusions. Well, this is me, I don't forget about that. <laughs> um, this is our picture in 2018. That's what the Ecuadorian soccer looked like before. You just have to learn their numbers, their decisions that we have created uh, from that day to today, and there are many numbers that we have increased from 2018 to 2022 where today. This is easy to just speak and put it in picture, that we're 28, our numbers, it's a lot of work behind, behind us that have, has been created from that day. This is how we, we were before the agreement with La Liga. Um, 
our our leagues in in South America they have many troubles, many problems. Most of them political. Uh, the way that's the way we're formed are the people that, that own clubs or precise clubs. They live with the problem, the press, um, and many other obstacles that we have in the way. But we have to learn that the only way to grow is with structure, organization, and order. That's pretty rare in our continent. And we're trying to battle with that to make our soccer league one of the top in the continent and why not one of the top in the world. That, that was the, the picture we had that before. Around 18 or 20 clubs, we visit La Liga and we signed this manager agreement. And April 20, uh, Liga Pro was found. That's uh, when we opened our offices. That's Javier to travel. He traveled to Ecuador and, and we, we started his dream of becoming a professional soccer league. This word right here, I think, is the key for, for us. Transparency. One of the hardest things to do in, in soccer, especially in our continent. We sign with one of the big four accounting firms in the world uh, just to demonstrate what we were talking about. It's not only just numbers, it's to be honest, to be transparent to the clubs that know the numbers. And that's why we, we were enforcing every day that the clubs have to, to do. Those are the key aspects of our organization. The number one is economic control. You have to understand that the clubs, by nature, they don't want to be controlled because they want to sign more players, they want to uh, spend more, and they want to win at the end of the day. That's, that's a real thing, they want to win. But you can't win at any cost. You have to be organized. And economic control help us to order the clubs, to make better administrations, and, and at the end of the day, know what, what type of talent you have as managers. Uh, all the departments that we have, this is basically a picture or a small picture of what La Liga is in, in Spain. Now we're going to see uh, a picture of Liga Pro to this day. Remember, what, what were we 2018? When we created Liga Pro, we had zero sponsors, not even one. Uh, and we started from scratch. Right now, all of these sponsors is what our commercial and marketing director have created from since the day we, we started. We tripled the naming rights and we doubled the broadcasting rights seen since our creation. It's not easy. It's a hard work behind that, but uh, the numbers right now have been really good for us. And these are some other achievements we, we have. Illiga Pro, which is right now one of the top things in the world, and also Liga Pro Institute. That was one of my dreams. Um, just so happy to, that it came true. Liga Pro Institute, we're trying to get uh, all the people in Ecuador that want to be involved in soccer, to study, to learn, not only to be just, I, I want to be in soccer. It's easy. No, you have to be prepared. And that's what we're trying to do. Um, this is an academic center. We sign a, an agreement with one of the top schools in, in Ecuador and also with Johan Cruyff Institute. So we're hoping to get better, better managers in the club, better people working in soccer. 
as their social media numbers. Have, they have grown a lot since when we started. And now, as I was saying, that's the fundamental project base, the economic control. These guys, they work 24 hours, they eat numbers, and they try to help all the clubs <laughs> to, to get better. Um, they fight with the clubs, as I was saying. The clubs don't want to be controlled by, by essence, because it's normal, they want to win. And they're competing each other against each other. But this is what's going to make the, the soccer in, in South America better. Hopefully, some other leagues will start doing, really doing that. It's hard, but it's the only way to get better. This was one of, uh, uh, one of the top achievements we had to create this uh, health and sanitary prevention department because during the pandemic, we were one of the only countries, one of, one of the best countries to start playing again. And uh, it's, it's been so good that other leagues around the continent has asked us for advice and we have we have been working with them just to help them how to create this department. At the end of the day, we in soccer, if, if we get money or we make money, we have to understand what's our purpose, what we really, what we really are here. Um, and if we don't have a social compromise, then it's no value for us. So you see, we have a funda the Fundación Liga Pro uh, to assist uh, and players and the Ecuadorian population with their needs. And uh, we have a lot of projects developed with the special need kids involving in current games. Before the games, before the matches, we have some special kids to play with them and, and have this, this special moment for them. We even, during the pandemic, we organized a fundraise event and we, we nearly got the half million dollars for, to help all the, all the damages with, for the COVID. That's our tournament. That's our tournament system. 16 teams in the first division, Serie A. 10 teams in the second division, or Serie B, which we, that's what we call it. Uh, before the fixture was was done by the same the same people of the teams right now we have a fixture is designed by the international experts around the world uh, everything is coordinated with the tv rights broadcaster and also big data I share with the clubs about a, a sports and economic performance so Everything is organized at the end. This was something special for us. Uh, as I was saying, transparency is one of the key elements for, for soccer. So the court of arbitration before was managed by the same people of the teams. And at the end, everything was a fight. No trust, no transparency. So we decide to take the court of arbitration and uh, make it really external and, and independent. And we make an agreement with the uh, Chamber of Commerce of Guayaquil, top lawyers in the city and the country. And right now, there's nothing more than transparency, celerity, and impartiality. The clubs have filed reports online, player, players and coaches own pay salaries, and integrity related misconduct. So that's, that's one of the, the great achievements that we have. This is what a map of the professional soccer leagues look like. Uh, as you see, this is what's going on in South America. It's, we're one of a kind in our continent, really independent. Colombia has a mixed administration with the federation and you see how it is in, in the first world, in Europe, United States, Mexico, really have professional soccer leagues 
independent. So that's, that's what we're trying to, to show the world and show our continent to copy this model because surely it's the one that's going to make uh, our soccer better. This is the difference between what we have seen in these four years, the difference between an independent league and a league associated with a national federation. Better income, because what I saw was that the league or the tournament was an accessory for the federation. And that's what we changed since, since then. Autonomy, efficiency, and the, at the end, what we really wanted is that the power of the decisions relies on the club. Not on one head, not on one person. The, the clubs decide how they want to administer their tournament, how they want to make the rules, and at, that's what, we, what was going on in, in Ecuador. This is a combined picture of what we have done since, since 2018. They're really different. The on pain complaints, we went with more than 200 on top before, and now there are only 40 and 50, which are, our goal is to, that number becomes zero. That's what we're trying to do. Uh, the numbers of the TV revenue have doubled, or for developing sports have doubled, and uh, what we're trying to do here is just to show that the way to manage a league is not hard. The picture is already there. You just have to copy MLS, La Liga, Bundesliga, and just try to apply it. There's I don't know how to, how to, how you can say it in English, but we, we say muletilla. That's in our countries, we like to say uh, we're different. We can't do it because we're different. Ecuadorians are different. No, we're not. We're the same people. We play, we kick a ball, and just gotta, you just got to realize that you can do it and you can work together. And the clubs can unite and reunite and, and change the whole, the whole system. It's not easy for me to explain something that is, is still growing. And the results have, have been shown by, by telling you that Ecuador, for me, is right now in sports number three in the continent. But in, in administration, for sure, it's number one. Because I've seen, you guys have seen all the leagues in, in South America, how they are and how they're working. We as are proud to, to tell you that we have been called to explain to other federations, how, other clubs, how to change the, the form of our minister, their, their tournament, and to become a league. Of course, nothing, nothing of this could have been possible if, if we, we didn't, we are having the help of La Liga. Those are the, some of the conclusions that you can, that you can get from, from this presentation, which is nothing more than showing the world what we have created as Ecuadorians. Normally, most people don't even know where we are, but uh, we are a small country of South America that have really worked together with the clubs and have created one of the top leagues in South America. And at the end, what we want you to to understand is that these clubs that are right here uh, were 20 years behind and right now they are competing each other. Our tournament is really hard 
It's really hard to play. You don't know which, which club is going to win. Everybody's developing uh, our better clubs. I, I have an example I was telling Darwin, which is one of the presidents, Orense. It's a small club. It's only have four years, but have like, one of the biggest structures in Ecuador. And it's, it's not easy to, to make that. You just have to have good people at, ahead of the clubs and will to do it. And they are in the good, in the good pace, and I think most of them are, are copying that. So this is, this is Ecuador. This is Liga Pro. We just want to create a better environment for our clubs and for our players to develop their talent and have one of the best leagues in, in the continent. That's our goal and that's what we're fighting for. So thank you very much. This is Liga Pro.